Today we're going to see how Cyberpunk 2077, a game that's been described by a few people as the new crisis, runs on what is definitely the worst ever pre-built with an RTX graphics card in it. Now, I did a video on this pre-built a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't seen that video yet, I definitely go check it out because even though it cost a thousand dollars, this PC looks like it was involved in a hideous mid-air collision at some point. But there was a massive oversight on my part in that video. Despite the fact that it has an RTX graphics card in it, I didn't test any ray traced game settings in that video. And a bunch of people were saying that ray traced settings would help alleviate the massive CPU bottleneck on that system. So what better way to test that than with Cyberpunk 2077? Now the exact terrible system that we're gonna pit against Loserpunk 2077 today is based around a Dell Optiplex that looks like it's seen more action than that dude from Avatar's face. For some reason, the new egg seller thought that it was a good idea to drop an RTX 2060 in this little crap box. Now the reason that it's kind of obviously not a good idea is because this crap box is based around an Intel Core i5-3470, which is an old i5 that only has four cores and no hyper-threading. And while gaming, it only sits at about 3.2 gigahertz, which is not very fast. And unfortunately, considering that it's not a K variant, there's nothing we can do about it. We can't overclock it or anything like that. We just have to live with the speed that it's running at. Luckily, the system does have 16 gigs of RAM in dual channel, but it's only DDR3L. Now how I'm gonna test for today's video is play Cyberpunk for about an hour and a half over various parts of the city to see how it affects the actual gaming performance on the system. And then we're gonna lock down a specific section, do some more testing, and then finally, just to put into context how much of a CPU bottleneck there actually is, we're gonna take the RTX 2060 and put it in a more powerful EPIN system with a 10850K in it, which is a beast 10 core CPU, just to put into perspective how much this RTX 2060 is being held back. So with that, let's get into the game. Now getting straight into it with 1080p and the high preset in the beginning of the street child storyline or whatever. Um, indoors, the performance is actually really good. It's much better than I was expecting. You're averaging at around 60 frames per second, which is very much in line with what you'd expect from an RTX 2060. Now, one of the reasons that you can see that there's not much of a CPU bottleneck here is in the top left corner, you can see that the CPU and GPU utilization is roughly the same. And that shows you that one part's not lagging behind the other. Now there are definitely stutters here and there's quite a big frame rate variation, but it's honestly very playable. The problem starts when you go outside. As you can see here is a bit of story section where we're driving around shooting at people in cars and stuff. And the frame rate has dropped significantly here. And as you can see in the top left corner, the CPU utilization is now much higher than the GPU utilization, which shows that the graphics card's just kind of idly waiting around for that crappy little i5. And actually, one of the things that I noticed over the course of the game is that this i5 RTX 2060 combination really doesn't like driving around in Night City. The moment that you get in a car and start moving more quickly, the frame rate tanks, often getting below 20 frames per second, which is, which is not a good look for the little avatar Optiplex. Now, the section of the map that I decided to do all of the comparative testing in is just a brief walk through Night City, which turned into essentially a worst case scenario waterboarding situation for this poor Optiplex. But I think that's a good situation to test under because then we can see how much various setting combinations affect the actual CPU bottleneck. Um, now, straight off the bat, just with 1080p high settings, we're getting about 29 frames per second. After that, I switched on just ray tracing with these settings, nothing else, and the frame rate tanked even further. In fact, it almost halved to 17.3 with a 1% low of 12 frames per second, which is actually very similar to the previous test. Now, after this, I decided to turn on the DLSS balanced preset, which got us about 22.3 frames per second. After this, I decided 
decided to switch off ray tracing but leave on DLSS balance just to see how that plays with a CPU bottleneck. And well, we're getting pretty much the same frame rate as with DLSS off, but obviously it didn't make a difference because what DLSS does is it reduces the render resolution and then upscales it, which helps if you have a GPU bottleneck at like 1440p or 4K. But if you have mainly a CPU bottleneck, reducing the render resolution isn't gonna help you. Now after this, I thought, let's see what 1440p does. Let's give it a higher resolution and see what that does for the frame rate. And well, it had pretty much no effect compared to 1080p. And again, this is because the graphics card isn't the limitation, it's the CPU here. So it's interesting to see how the games behave in response to a little loser i5 here. And then after this, finally, I decided to test a couple of other presets just to see how it affects the frame rate. And with ultra, low, and high, it pretty much makes no difference. Now, just a quick note before I take the little RTX 2060 out of the highway pileup Optiplex and put it in the e system, I just wanted to make a quick note on the visual quality of the DLSS settings, which it's widely considered you need to use for ray tracing, even with more high-end graphics cards. At 1080p, the DLSS in this game does, does not look amazing. Amazing. Uh, even with balanced settings, it becomes noticeably blurrier than without DLSS on. And then when you turn on ultra performance DLSS, it kind of looks like you spent the entire previous night rubbing a tub of Vaseline into your eyes. Like it's, it, it, it looks real bad at 1080p. And with that, finally, before we finish off the video, let's see how much of a difference that 10 core behemoth makes to the gaming performance. Now, when you just walk through Night City, it more than doubles the frame rate from the i5 with the high preset. You're sitting at an average of 62.9 frames per second. And that's the huge difference between these two setups. Regardless of where you are on the map, if you're indoors or driving around or walking through a crowd in Night City, you get very little frame rate variation. It's actually very impressive. That 1% low of 52.5 frames per second is very good. It's, it's pretty consistent. And if you take a quick peek at what the system's doing, it's clear that the tables have turned. The i9 is now patiently waiting for that RTX 2060, which has gone from being the bottleneck E to the bottleneck R. And the story stays the same if you turn on ray tracing with DLSS balanced. You more than double the average frame rate, going from 22.3 frames per second to 48.9 frames per second with the i9. And there we have it. Clearly, an i5-3470 is a terrible pairing with an RTX 2060. Regardless of what you do with the settings, just there's, there's nothing you can do to alleviate that CPU bottleneck. Yes, you may jump up to 1440p and then not have nearly as much of a CPU bottleneck, but then you're still gaming at 22 frames per second. Yeah, there's not really much you can do with this with this ammo crate system. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Check out my stream linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.